Hi everyone, in this video we're going to analyze the aerodynamics of a motorbike using CFD simulations or computational fluid dynamics. We're going to use a bike created by Dotto Creations, which is an Italian design studio who created this bike for a design challenge at Airshaper. And we're actually going to use Airshaper to run this simulation. Let me show you how that's done. So you simply drag and drop the file, give it a title and upload it to Airshaper. And then you hit the next button and the file will be converted for easy viewing in your browser. So once the model has been converted, you'll be able to see it in your browser. Um, if the orientation is not correct, you can just change the position of the bike um, and then hit the set reference button if you like to set the new reference for the frontal surface area before you start adding actual side wind rotations, yaw rotations and so on. In this case, the bike of course is on the ground, so above the ground is for drones. It's, it's, it's not a building that would be static, it's moving, which means that behind the scenes a moving floor will be added to the simulation, so the virtual wind tunnel built around your motorcycle. It's air, you can also do hydrodynamics, you specify the velocity, so imagine you're going for top speed optimization, maybe you go for 250 km per hour. If you're going for efficiency or the average speed across a lap, maybe you want to go for 150, or if it's for highway cruising, uh, really to reduce the fuel consumption, maybe you go for an average velocity of 100 km per hour. Then you select the units, this one is in millimeters, and using this automated functionality you can actually set up the rotating wheels of the bike. This means that during the simulation the software will add a rotating wall velocity boundary condition to the surface of the wheels, and this will increase the realism, add some pressure buildup around the wheels, and so on. Um, once the selection is done, so you can see that the software automatically detects the axis of rotation of the wheels. It also calculates the radius and sets the RPM to match the driving speed of the vehicle. Of course, these are slow, slowly rotating just to indicate the direction. During the simulation, the RPM will be set correctly. If anything is missing in the selection, you can just edit the selection and add, for example, uh, the brake discs in this. Uh, yeah, the brake discs in this case. What you can also do on Airshaper is to add a radiator. So in CFD, there's the te technique called porous elements, which means that in a volume, in this case, the automatically detected radiator here, um, it'll add a pressure drop as the air flows through this volume. Because modeling a real radiator is very complex, um, this is a very common technique. Basically, what you need to provide is how much pressure drop you have for a given velocity. And you need to do so for two points or two different velocities so that the software can automatically plot a curve through those points and calculate it for any given other point. So imagine this is 1 meters per second, this is 10 pascals, this is 2 meters per second, and this is 30 pascals. That's the only thing you need to set. In this case, we have two radiators, one at the bottom as well. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to use the same dummy values. And that's it, that's the only thing you need to do to set up a simulation at Airshaper and then you can click the next button and select your accuracy. There is a basic simulation which doesn't include rotating wheels or radiators and doesn't have a PDF report and only has 1 million cells. Nevertheless, it can be useful uh, for students, for hobbyists and so on if you're comparing very crude concepts. But most of the design work will actually be done using the regular simulation here which features 10 million cells, which is 10 times more than the basic simulation, so a lot more resolution, comes with a full PDF report, and includes those things like the rotating wheels and radiators. If you really want to go to the highest level of accuracy, you can go for the advanced simulation, which is 50 to 100 million cells, and this one actually um, is very useful prior to going to a wind tunnel test, or if you really want to capture very small details. So once you launch the simulation, everything will be pushed to the high-performance computing infrastructure where every simulation gets a dedicated server using more than 100 CPUs to actually run the simulation. Which means that a regular simulation, for example, is finished in just 2-3 to three hours and you get an email once everything's done. And then you can use the visuals in Airshaper to help you understand the aerodynamics and to see how you can actually improve them. Let's have a look. So this is what you see when the simulation has finished. So if you go to the first visualization, this is what we call the pressure clouds. This one visualizes where actually drag is originating from or where you're losing most of the energy. Technically, it's a total pressure coefficient isosurface for a value of zero. In normal terms, this is a 3D representation of where the energy losses are highest. For a motorbike, 
because it's a very open surface, there are a lot of areas where you're generating drag. Let's start with the tires. So this one has simplified tires. So normally, if it's not a race bike, you, you might have some tire threads on there, which can also generate drag. As soon as the air actually crosses this edge of the tire, uh, which is actually going inward afterwards, uh, there's flow separation. Then there are, of course, the exposed brake discs on this bike. Um, then there's the suspension, which is shielded in this case. So we spent a lot of time optimizing this bike together with Dot Dot Creations and optimizing this cover here to shield the suspension, to shield the bolts, which are, which are actually inside the suspension and so on. That really helps to clean up the airflow, reduce the drag locally, but also provide cleaner air to then hopefully reattach to the rest of the bodywork further downstream. In this case, we have um, some openings. In this case, this one was closed, uh, but sometimes you have a cooler or, or some air feed uh, to, to this area, actually. Um, the most important thing here is that the coolers here are located in this area. They're not visualized here, they're taken out of the visualization, but you can toggle them on or they can be toggled on for you. Um, and that is because there's a pressure area uh, in, that, in that location. So there's a pressure buildup here, which is good for the inlets of the radiators to actually get that pressure buildup. And then at the rear, uh, the air comes out of the radiators. Um, if we look at the wings, so these days it's quite popular to add wings to motorbikes. Um, and the goal is to add downforce mainly at the front. Because one of the problems when accelerating is that the weight virtually shifts to the rear wheel, which means that the front wheel is actually um, not seeing as much vertical force towards the ground, which means you have less grip on the front wheel. Plus, if you accelerate too quickly, uh, the front wheel will actually come off the ground and that's your limitation to accelerate even further or even faster. So pushing the, the front of the motorbike to the ground can help you to accelerate even faster. So these wings were actually optimized um, a lot uh, to avoid flow separation. You can still see some flow separation here. So at the bottom here, there's a bit of flow separation coming off the wings, especially when um, the vertical uh, side plates on the wings uh, meet the wing surface itself. Uh, this can be sensitive. Um, you can see that this one is a bit too aggressive, so we have flow separation, but in general, uh, we do have a very nice low pressure area at the bottom of these uh, wings. This one has a double wing setup, actually, which means that um, the low pressure of this one should be far enough from this other wing, because you can see the low pressure area, uh, you can see this actually um, through the pressure mapped on the bodywork here, it extends quite far below this wing, so if this one would be too close to this one, the low pressure here would be acting on the top of this one, the pressure side, and it would cancel out any benefits. So that spacing is quite important. And of course the angle is quite important. You're also shooting air towards certain areas on the motorbike. So we tried optimizing the way the air comes off and, and, and combines with the leg, the elbow, and so on. You can see that there's still a bit of flow separation here. Um, this area here, this is air being trapped against the radiator, which is good to have pressure buildup on the radiator, but then it needs to evacuate sideways and curve around the bodywork. We could theoretic theoretically still improve the curvature here and reduce this uh, flow separation and attach it in a better way than this. There was also a critical area here uh, because the airflow doesn't only curve to the sides, it also curves to the bottom here. Um, and the tire wake combined with air hitting the radiators and then curving down makes it difficult to stay attached here at the bottom. So you'll even see some MotoGP concepts uh, working with small wings and so on here uh, to help clean up that flow and to manage it. Then of course we have the windscreen. This one is quite critical as well. Um, the way you actually launch the air um, to hopefully touch tangentially uh, on the surface of the helmet is very important. Um, this also has an impact on the drag and downforce obviously. And the way you shield the hands is also important. We tried playing with the width of this uh, front windscreen here um, to see if we could shield the hands. That is of course possible, if you, but if you overdo it, then the windscreen itself will generate more drag than what you reduce um, on the hands. Then this transition, as mentioned, is very important here. Uh, the small curvature here, you can have like a convex or a concave curvature here, also plays a big role. Then what is often uh, overlooked is that the rider itself obviously has a huge impact on the drag, plus he or she changes position during 
um, the race or during normal riding. So incentivizing people to get into an aerodynamic position really helps to reduce uh, fuel consumption or battery usage. The ultimate goal is to actually have flow reattachment down the back of the rider, which is not easy. Um, this rider is also slightly asymmetric, um, so you'll see that it's not too easy to attain attached flow, especially behind the shoulders. If you look at the surface friction, you'll see that there's quite a lot of blue areas which indicate that there's low friction between the air, which usually indicates that there's separated airflow. If we look at the surface pressure, we can see that, of course, there's a pressure buildup at the front, which is what you use um, to feed your radiators. You can see that the front tire is fully exposed. Suspension components still have some pressure buildup, but it's quite minimized compared to what we had before we had these covers. Um, these parts of the suspension are still exposed, and you can see that the air hits them full on. The hands are still in exposed airflow, and the feet here are also grabbing air. So maybe playing a bit with a small spoiler or wing here to guide the air around the feet could be nice uh, to further reduce the drag. And ultimately, you also want to close the wake behind the motorbike. Um, all of these drivetrain components, they also play a huge role in terms of how much drag you generate. But of course, you also want cooling there. So we've had the pressure map. Um, you can see the low pressure as you curve around surfaces. So quite important to keep your airflow attached there and not to disturb it in these high speed, low pressure areas. Um, the surface friction helps you understand where you have high friction. As mentioned, we're running a simulation with rotating wheels. So you can really see the increased surface friction here on the surface of the wheel. Um, as it goes against the flow direction here of the wind. Uh, where the air hits the legs, you can see, really see that these are exposed quite a lot, just like the shoulders and the air needs to speed up and curve around these areas and this generates um, surface friction, which can also cause flow separation. Then the vertical streamlines are provided with the option to actually move them dynamically. So you can really understand what's happening with the airflow. For example, in this view, you can see how the airflow gets accelerated and pulled up by the wings here at the front and this really interacts with the rest of the rider. You can also do this with the horizontal streamlines, so move them up and down for example to see to what extent the airflow stays attached actually to the back of the rider, how you get some parts of the flow which swirl down more than other parts and so on. You can have a look at what, what is happening um, at the lower levels around the wheels for example, all of this is just uh, dynamically integrated. There is a wind noise module here available. This one is not a full acoustic simulation. That would require a very precise transient simulation. These are steady state simulations using K omega SST as a turbulence model to solve the Rand's equations. This means that the noise estimate is based on an acoustic analogy, which is a mathematical formulation that translates the noise energy um, so that translates the turbulent kinetic energy into noise energy. So you'll see that the wheels are a typical source of noise, but also the air coming off the windscreen, which is very turbulent here, and very close to the ears of the rider, can be quite problematic. Then, if you have specified radiators, you'll be able to analyze the flow through the radiators. So just click on the elements here. The top radiator, for example, features, uh, if we toggle between pressure and velocity, we'll see that the velocity is highest at the top part of the radiator, because, of course, the pressure is always also higher there. And this is because the air fits in between the top of the wheel and the bottom of the uh, bodywork of the motorbike here at the front. So the air here has more momentum hitting the radiator, and thus there's a higher pressure buildup. This part is likely more in the wake of the front wheel and suspension and so on, and, th and thus there's less flow there. If you look at the bottom radiator, it's the, actually the opposite story here, um, which is also related to the way um, the bodywork around um, all of these components is actually shaped. So you have this divide here uh, between the two elements, so the air will actually curve around this one, speed up a bit and then hit the uh, radiator there. Uh, so you have a bit of an increased flow there at the top part, uh, but the bottom part is likely again caught in the wake um, of the wheel and performing at lower flow rates. So optimizing this is quite important. Also, you can analyze the average velocity here and you can use the 
calculated flow rate through the radiator um, together with the temperatures of both the air and the cooling liquid that you have to calculate the actual cooling capacity. So if you have overcapacity, too much cooling capacity, you can actually reduce the size of a radiator or if you can improve the performance of the existing radiator with better ducting, with better um, approach of the air and so on, they can maybe make it smaller and, and, and reduce the weight further on your motorbike. If you then look at the forces, the Airshipper platform will automatically split your model into separate components or if you upload a model with hierarchy of components, object files or step files, it will just inherit different component structures. As you can see, you can just click the components and analyze the forces on each individual element and make a short list of which element is causing which drag. For example, this wing here is generating a negative vertical force so the definition of vertical force the positive is up so negative means it's downforce this one has around 40 newtons of downforce which is quite something uh, so left and right and then you also have the wings here at the bottom which are also generating downforce less downforce but still uh, noteworthy so that's what you can do with the forces optionally you can also Include the full simulation data. Now this is simulation data which is provided in open foam format, which is a default format that you can use to visualize data in Paraview. Paraview is an open source scientific data viewing package. Uh, there's also a free instruction video at Airshaper. Uh, just go to learnings and then check that video on how to actually analyze your data in Paraview, how you can make your own streamlines around custom areas, change the color code and so on. And then last but not least, there's also the option to download a PDF report which contains more details. Let's, ha let's have a look at that one as well. So in the PDF report, you'll first find a summary which details all of the settings that were used to set up a simulation, how many cells you got. This is one with around 12 million cells, so usually the platform overshoots a little, which is good, get some extra resolution. The frontal surface area is calculated automatically uh, as an input for the drag coefficient calculation. And then you'll actually get to see the real CFD mesh. So this is not the original CFD, uh, not the original 3D model. This is the actual mesh which was used for the CFD simulations. So you can see that there's an enormous amount of detail captured with the CFD mesh. And part of the reason for this is that every simulation on the Airshaper platform first runs at half the resolution. So this one runs at 5 million cells with a mesh which is already refined around complex geometries. And as you get closer to the motorbike, then it converges. And based on the converged simulation results, um, the algorithm will automat automatically refine the mesh where the gradient of the pressure is high around the wings, for example, and where you have a high vorticity, typically in the wake where you have a lot of turbulence and swirls in the flow. Then this refined mesh actually continues, so you continue the simulation with the refined mesh, and then you end up with a very precise result with the mesh which has been completely dedicated to the flow specifically for your object. So a 10 million cell mesh at Airshaper is actually quite a lot more accurate than a generic 10 million cell mesh that you will find with uh, normal meshing procedures. If we then continue, you'll find tables with data on the forces. So you have the drag force, you have the lift force or down force hopefully, and lateral forces, especially if you do a yaw angle analysis or if you have an asymmetric setup. You also have information on the pitch, roll and yaw moments which affect the stability of the rider as well and there's information on the convergence of the simulation. Convergence is detected automatically after which the, continue, uh, the simulation continues to run for a number of iterations to get a reliable averaged value for both the forces and the visualizations that you see in the report and online. Then the drag coefficient is calculated automatically. The power is estimated, which is required to overcome the aerodynamics, not the mechanical resistance. And then there's an indication of the front and rear lift coefficients, which indicates which aero balance you have. So despite the front wings, we still have a slight positive uh, force at the front wheel, so a lift, uh, but there is quite a lot of downforce at the rear, so there is definitely still room for improvement. And then the rest of the report actually contains just more of the visuals that you already saw online, and there are some extras like the slices of the pressure and the velocity that you see here at the end of the report. So that was it for this video on the CFD or computational fluid dynamics analysis of a motorbike.
If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you want to discuss your project, just drop a comment or send us a direct message. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.